The city is, of course, a global village, uh, which is why today's theme of live, work, and move is so apposite. I'll skip, if I may, over the living and working in London, because you will be incredibly well served by our speakers and panelists today. I will, however, dwell a little longer on the topic of moving. Movement is London's pulse. With a systolic thump, three million commuters make their way to work. Materials, food, and retail goods flood into construction sites, markets, and shops. With a diastolic whoosh, sewage, rubbish, and air pollution are sent for disposal. From a distance, these cardiac rhythms appear to define a city, and the uninitiated may even think that London's health can be gauged by measuring them. But London is actually in the business of moving information, ideas, culture, and money. Last year, when I was Lord Mayor, I spoke to hundreds of citizens, policymakers, businessmen, and development organizations, not only in the UK, but across the world. From all of them, I received messages that emphasized to me that cities are factories of the mind, driving innovation, creating wealth, and providing opportunity. And it is the last of these the provision of opportunity, opportunity for education, for social mobility, opportunity for quality of life, as well as prosperity, which give the true measure of a city's health. All too often, when considering infrastructure, we tend to think in silos. We view infrastructure as a means to a particular end. Crossrail will reduce journey times and congestion for travellers. Thames Tideway Tunnel will move sewage and reduce pollution in the Thames. But policymakers and infrastructure planners know they need to break down these silos and think holistically. They need to think about the outcomes, the opportunities that new infrastructure will afford citizens. I'm sure that you're all familiar with the, uh, the approach that was used successfully to turn Bogota in Colombia from the murder capital of um, Latin America into a paradigm of sustainable development. So let me give you another example. A city with an underutilized railway siding, using it to, to build an urban railway station was the first idea. But joined up thinking produced a waste to energy plant on the site, the waste then being transported there by rail. It also resulted in more efficient facilities for waste freight and passenger access to the urban railway system, freeing up waste depots for housing and buses. And taking an idea from another city, Philadelphia, the resulting energy could be optimized for schools, trains, regulation, or sold into the grid as a money earner, a calculation done with a piece of software every 30 seconds. I'll leave you, if I may, with my favorite quote about successful cities that comes from the pen of the much-missed Sir Terry Pratchett. As full of life as an old cheese on a hot day, as loud as a curse in a cathedral, as bright as an oil slick, as colorful as a bruise, and as full of activity, industry, bustle, and sheer exuberant busyness as a dead dog on a termite mound. <laughs> That's very Terry Pratchett. I hope that today's conference reflects this as another set of great opportunities and that you will enjoy it as much as I will. Thank you very much.